Hi everyone, it's Renee with Harvest Hill Cottage. Today I've got a fun video full of Valentine DIYs. Let's jump right in. Our first project is some cute little fabric shaped hearts. I made a pattern out of paper. I'm using drop cloth here, which is one of my favorite fabrics to work with. It has a vintage look, it's hearty, it's inexpensive, and it's very versatile. I folded over the fabric and used my pattern to trace um, the heart shape. And um, I have front and a back here that are matching, so that works out perfectly. I used a glue gun with the drop cloth fabric. Um, it adheres the fabric together nicely. It's easy to work with. I did leave an outside edge so that I could fray the fabric. Um, after I glued everything together, um, just gives it a fun vintage look. Make sure you leave an opening to add your polyfill to give your heart some dimension. Once you get your polyfill in there, you can use your glue gun to go ahead and close up that final opening. You can use any fabric glue really, but I did find that the glue gun worked best with the drop cloth fabric for me. Next, I just frayed those edges to give it a nice tattered vintage look. Then it was time to embellish. I cut out a smaller heart out of a complementary fabric and glued it onto the front. And I have a collection of vintage buttons, so I just chose um, a button to set right there in the middle of the smaller heart. You could embellish these in different ways with um, Oh, jewelry or little trinkets that you've collected maybe over the years. Um, you can use your imagination here and just make these really cute. Now on this one, I decided to add a little hanger. I picked up this rusty old wire from an estate sale for like 50 cents. And so I just poked a couple of holes through the top of the heart and ran um, a piece of that wire through. Used my wire cutters um, to um, just turn a little uh, coil there to hold it in place and I think it turned out really sweet with this cute little rusty old wire hanger and um, you know that way the heart can be hung on a doorknob or a nail or even just sitting on your decorative trays on your counter. Here's a little collection of hearts I put together. I do have some of these available on our website at harvesthillcottage.com and I will post a link below. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below of this project. For our next project, we're going to use this newer um, mold from Iron Orchid Designs. It's called Frames and it's just this lovely collection of miniature Victorian inspired picture frames and we're going to use the amazing casting resin because um, the resin really brings out all of the fine details in the frames. If you've never used resin before it's not as hard as you might think. You simply mix together um, the two solutions that come in the package, it's a 50-50 combination. You mix it up in a cup and just pour it right into your mold. No preparation is needed with the mold. You don't need to put in any kind of spray or cornstarch or anything. You just pour the resin in, let it dry, and then pop it out. It's really great stuff. So this particular resin actually dries in about 10 to 15 minutes and when it's dry it's going to turn white like you see here and in order to see if it's ready to remove just pull back um, some of the edges of your mold and you'll see that it easily just comes right up. So I just go around and just like you see here just um, pull away all of the edges and then at that point they, it literally will just pop right out. I will link this below with my other Amazon affiliate uh, recommended 
products in the description box in case you're interested in trying out the amazing casting resin. We also sell all of the IOD molds on our website and you can find that link below as well. Now when you pull the molds out, they will be slightly pliable as you see here. So because they're frames, you don't want them to be bendy or um, you know, curved. So I do put the frames on a flat surface to let them dry. Once they're dry completely and cured, they will be very hard, very durable. Um, so you can rest assured that once they're dry, they won't be bendy anymore. So you can paint them right away. Actually, you don't have to wait for them to dry, but because I want them to harden first and not be bendy, um, I just let mine cure for a few hours and then I went ahead and set to painting them. We are stockists for Fusion Mineral Paint and it is our favorite paint, of course. It does go on the resin very nicely. Um, here I'm using French eggshell and the color Fort York Red and I'm also going to be using the vintage metallic gold. Here's the gold. Um, really beautiful kind of muted vintage inspired gold. Um, the red, I'm not a red person, but with it being Valentine's Day, I thought, what the heck? I did put a gold glaze on the red just to vintage it up a little bit. Now that I have got my frames painted, I'm going to add some of this new, awesome, vintage inspired decoupage paper by Jamie Ray Vintage. So I cut the images out of the paper that I wanted to use in the frames. One of the things I love about the paper is that you can cut it up and use it on several different projects. Um, I tore the edges of the image to put into the frame. It just gives it a vintage look. And I used Fusion's decoupage gel as my decoupage medium. So this is how I ripped the edges. I uh, just use the water technique, just add a little bit of water to the edge with a paintbrush, and then you can just easily rip um, the edges of your image. Now you can add your paper to your frame. Here, I'm just gonna do one half of the paper at a time. That way it holds it in place well. Uh, just put your decoupage medium there with a paintbrush. Um, just make sure you get all of the edges, a nice even coat, and then um, just smooth down your paper um, one side at a time. You'll want to put a thin layer of your decoupage medium on top and that just seals and secures your image in place. So I decided when I put the backing onto the larger frames to add a ribbon as well as some magnetic tape. Actually, I put magnetic tape on the backs of all of these. Um, I think these would make great gifts for Valentine's Day. You could slip them inside of a card um, to give to a friend or a loved one. Um, also, just fun Valentine's Day decor, I think. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, a quick puppy picture break. Ranger had his first birthday. Next project involves a piece of scrap wood. I'm using the color Chateau. I'm mixing in some fresco powder, which is just some texturizing powder um, because I want to put some nice thick texturized paint on the board. I'm going to turn it into a sign, but I want it to look old. So I did put the paint on really thick, but I did leave some of the edges um, not fully covered. That way it looks uh, like it's got some age on it. And next I'm going to add um, this diamond pattern stencil from JRV. Um, all of the products in this video, by the way, are available on our website and I will post links below. So I wanna do the diamond pattern in a really soft, soft vintage blue. So I combined 50-50 of the Chateau, which is a creamy white with 
the French eggshell. And I have this nice soft blue. I'm gonna stencil in. I want a vintage look and I want sort of a faded look. Um, make sure you're using a really good stencil brush with thick, um, sorry, um, stiff bristles. Um, load up your brush and make sure you offload much of the paint I would say most of the paint onto a paper towel. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush. Um, and then just pounce the brush lightly up and down until you get the coverage that you want in your stencil. This is really how you avoid bleed through and um, messy edges on your stencil. Usually the problem if you're having bleed through is that you've got too much paint on your brush. Now, once my stencil was done and dry, I used some sandpaper just to um, distress it up and um, knock back some of the color. Next, I'm ready to add the next layer of stenciling. Um, Jamie Ray came out with some new Valentine packs. Um, this year, they are available for purchase on our website. And I just chose one of those um, French Valentine stencils to put on my sign. Um, it's French wording. I do believe that it's um, maybe like a perfumery sign. Um, I'm just gonna use the color Ash, which is a charcoal gray, to stencil on the lettering of my sign. And here it is all done up and looking great. I did use some sandpaper again to knock back some of that um, color and I think it looks pretty darn good. Okay next I have this thrifted mirrored vanity tray and it just felt like it needed a little something so I pulled out a transfer from Iron Orchid Designs. This is Redoute. It is a collection of eight pages of beautiful, vibrant roses. And it's made in such a way that you can piece them together and um, create um, just a beautiful array of roses. And so I cut apart um, some of the ones I wanted to use on my mirror. Um, there are, is also some um, wording that you can add to your image. So I'm just going to figure out where I want to put them. And then um, once you figure out exactly where you want your image on your piece, peel the backing off, use the included um, application stick, and you just rub the transfer onto your piece. It's as simple as that. You can put this on um, decor uh, pieces, furniture. Um, you can even put them on walls. Um, really easy and fun way to embellish your pieces. I think it turned out really great and I'm loving the extra pop color here. Well, there you have it, some fun DIY Valentine projects. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your support and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so that you can come back and see more. Thanks again, we really appreciate you and God bless.